Chris, I really enjoyed our conversation the other day about your gold fund summary that you do for mineralfund.com. Can you tell Investor Intel audience members what it is that the Mineral Fund is, please? Uh, very well, yes. We, we track 101 gold funds. So this is all the world gold funds. Um, and we keep information, comprehensive information relating those funds, including most importantly, their asset allocations. $30 billion in those 101 funds. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. You threw out some numbers that were astonishing to me. You said this 101 funds currently invest in approximately $30 billion worth of public companies. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And then you started telling me about how it's allocated around the world. Can you share with us some details about that? Okay. The... Um... The biggest uh, destination dollars for those investment dollars is Canada. 55% of the money is invested in Canada. The second biggest destination is Australia. 15% of the money is invested in listed gold companies in Australia. So that's a total of 70%. But behind that, you've got, um, you've got the US with 8%. You've got England and South Africa with 5% each. You've got 4% split amongst Russia, China, Mexico, Ireland. Um, and then you've got about 8% held in cash. So that's the breakdown. That totals about 100% of the money and 55% Canada, 15% Australia, that's 70% of the market right there. So I would assume um, if, and can we get this information on your website? I would assume that if the funds are selecting public companies that they either increase or decrease their positions in, it might be giving us as investors a cue to which companies we should be buying. Is that the correct conclusion we should have? Uh, absolutely. And the, the, there's a couple reasons, a couple things about that. One is that portfolio turnover is relatively low in these funds, slower than, than, um, than standard equity portfolios. So when you look section by section at what's going on with their asset allocations, you can see what companies they're building positions in and which companies they're divesting their holdings from. Uh, and that is, uh, that is uh, you know, uh, intelligent, market intelligence. That allows us to uh, to to determine what the best minds in the business. These portfolio managers have uh, several cycles experience, and they spend their time comprehensively analyzing these companies, balance sheets, income statements, statement of cash flows, and resources, resources, reserves, geological parameters, management team qualities, uh, and 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 the summary of all of that knowledge is expressed in their investments. So we see what they're increasing their allocations to and what they're you know, divesting from. And then also we see, more, quite interestingly, new names. In a rallying gold market, we see you know, junior companies that they pick up that have not been held before. And that's usually uh, the beginning of a, of a prolonged um, you know, trend for, for a, a new company name as it uh, develops and works out on its business plan, develops a discovery. And so a lot of very significant market intelligence is garnered from looking and reviewing the asset allocation information. Well, I'll tell you, can you give us an example of a new exploration company that you've seen being picked up on any of these funds in the last, say, month or two? Tracy, I can't give you the, all the information that, uh, that we have on asset allocations. I'll give you an example. Um, a Cisco development uh, was a new name, came to one of the funds that we review on a monthly basis. Uh, we took a close look at this company and saw the compelling characteristics that that fund manager had identified in that company. So for those of you interested in finding out some of the new companies that are being picked up by these funds, they can go to your website. Is that correct? Yes, they can. Yep. But I think what's most compelling to me to go to your website was you were telling me that these are all signs for building up towards a potentially robust gold market this year. Is that correct? There are several signs to suggest we're into a robust gold market. Um, central bank buying, depleting reserves for uh, reserves and resources by leading mining companies, um, declining gold production, as has been consistently the case in the last two major gold cycles. There's been major, two major gold cycles since the end of Bretton Woods in 1971. Both were accompanied by declining production over uh, decade-long periods, and the production began to decline in 2019. There are several signals to suggest we're into a, the early stages of a robust gold, gold cycle. Yeah. 
Well, you heard it here at Investor Intel. And for more information, go to mineralfunds.com. Chris Berlay, thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy.